It's one of the most serious songs on this album because it has this uh, complex structure, these technical parts. And in my opinion, uh, it represents this present time flash The main riff is killer, it has a catchy chorus, uh, the atmosphere is great. For me this song, you know, reminds me this kind of all Sepultura atmosphere. Extreme Fire Hazard has this uh, Bay Area thrash metal character uh, we love so much. I remember uh, driving in the highway, it was a really hot summer day, and there was signs all over the way saying Extreme Fire Hazard. And when I saw it, I, I was like, okay guys, let's write a song called Extreme Fire Hazard, talking about the um, the feeling we have just before hitting the stage and setting the stage. So the inspiration for Full HD came about uh, one day in rehearsal we were discussing this very interesting chapter from a Paolo Sorrentino book. And, and there's this character, this old musician, that he just hates everything. He writes this text and he hates one thing and the opposite and in the end, he just hates everything. So this really inspires us because in the end we all feel hate and hate is part of daily life. And hate really shapes the way you see things. I try it, I really try it, but I can't contain myself. Full HD is, is an angry tune with this uh, biohazard and suicidal tendencies feel. Uh, the reason of this composition was hate, real hate, because we lost hundreds of shows and all the bands were pissed off. So we, we didn't go out and destroy everything. We just went to the rehearsal place and, and composed. With Macarena Mosh, we are still moshing against negative beliefs. It's the second part of our song, Roll It's Mosh. Uh, it's the sequel you didn't ask for. It is a positive uh, trash song with a pinch of humor. Macarena Mosh has a funny story, catchy melody, full speed riffs, and it continues with the message Mosh is a For me, some parts of the song sound like uh, early Halloween or Blind Guardian uh, wanted to play thrash <laughs> metal. <laughs> Is Macarena a person, an old lady from the store, a dance, maybe it's a collective trance, don't know, we will figure it out in the pit. So looking at Speak Your Truth, I think it has all the elements of a great classic thrash song, like, you know, this way of uh, presenting the main riff with the hits, and also, you know, the gang chants, the, the structure, I think everything is just this, you know, these riffs are into this classic vibe. There's this ending riff that I, I love when riffs are like this, like chromatic descending, like violence would do. And the other cool thing I, th I think about this, uh, this song is that we have three solos and we have both guitars doing solos, which we don't have, I think, in the rest of the song.
Lyrically, I think uh, there's a confession here on Christic's beliefs and approach to life, and this is what we really wanted to communicate and encourage the listener to, to follow his own path. <laughs> Beast is a motivational banger uh, song for the gym, you know, for uh, surpassing your limits and all this. And I'm not really this kind of guy. But when we were writing the, the album, there came this moment we were so focused and I was living with Vivi and he would wake me up every day at six in the morning. And it, it, it's for writing music, which for me, it's totally cool. But still, I felt like this, you know, pro sportsman entering beast mode. It's one of the fastest songs of the album. What I like a lot is uh, this uh, perfect mix between uh, this European school that reminds me to Creator uh, and these melodies. And then you go straight to American uh, by area influence with this uh, part C. So, I think we really need this combination of melody, aggressiveness and really fucking fast. We became with this riff that reminds me this fistful of metal and and yeah I think it's uh, the best riff he ever brought for Crisis or one of the best let's say in my opinion and it was like dude we have to to make a song with this but then it, it was something missing so we decided to put this arpeggios intro that sounds like Jason Becker and then it was like a perfect song. <laughs> So with John, we go a bit into humorous uh, territory again, and and here he is. It's John Lennon, and what would we include John Lennon? Well, this is a imaginary tale about the time travel, and we just came up with this stupid idea that we love. It's just this guy who travels back in time. He has this boss metal song, and which is a very well-known pedal for a guitarist. And, and the guy just gives it to John Lennon. So John Lennon absolutely loves it. Everything changes. 1965, black metal begins because this guy is producing the Beatles and the other guy is out. So the song creates this kind of parallel universe with where uh, the biggest uh, pop band in the world plays metal way before it was really invented. So imagine what would happen. This butterfly effect would twist all these bands in the radio to fucking extreme metal act. You know, I'm a huge fan of anime and Japanese culture, so for me this song is uh, extremely special. No, for me, Shannon Fist, it's like a day of fury where I express all my anger and, you know, it's like, you know, those days uh, where you want to punch somebody in the face and, you know, I use uh, anime character techniques, combat techniques as a metaphor to canalize this anger. Come The idea for this song came out when we were playing uh, in Tokyo and we had a great time there. And you know, this song has this kind of crossover Crysis vibes that reminds me of songs like Bring Him to the Pit, for example. Mosh! 
WNM United. This song is a, so it's a song that already appeared on our the Pizza EP. Um, but when we were touring uh, Europe in the middle of this pandemic situation, we really felt the healing power of music uh, when we were playing. We saw how people was you know having this energy, and we also had it when we were playing, and it was so amazing that we thought we have to fucking reinforce this message for the new album. Not just this, but also asking our friends from the new wave of thrash metal generation to uh, sing with us this message that I think is so important right now. So we uh, asked our friends from Warbringer, Violator, Bonded by Blood, Gamma Bomb, Full by Fire, Insanity Alert, Angelus and Patrida, um, Suicidal Angels, Nervosa and Dust Bolt. <laughs> all these friends in one song, all together singing this message. It was great and fucking amazing. Bogda Viterna, or in English we could say maybe Coven of the Goat, uh, is, uh, speaks about uh, cattle and witchcraft back in 15th and 16th century and is dedicated to all these people who were murdered by religious fanatism and all this kind of bullshit. Towards the end of the album, we come uh, with these two songs, which are one of the most violent and aggressive songs we have on this album. And Bog de Viterna uh, has this uh, first part, which is so technical and so fast, but then it turns into uh, an epic solo part and everything. And we also, there we also wanted to play with harmonized vocals, uh, where you can hear us for the first time. With this song, <laughs> we say goodbye to trash and embrace flamenco. <laughs> Javi is really a fan of uh, doing this Spanish clapping, okay? And this is very traditional Spanish way. Um, and we thought it would be interesting to include these elements in one of our songs. I love the intensity of the song and Huli sings like a motherfucker. Love it. To me, it's like if any Morricone would fuck Ride the Lightning and the song would be Escape the Electric Fate. <laughs> 